What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com and today I'm going to be giving you guys a sneak peek in my machine template. What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com and if you've been following the channel, you know I've been really fucking with Machine heavily the past few weeks, um, I'm really enjoying it, I went out and bought the jam and that thing is life, so I'm just, um, you know, I'm just really having fun with Machine and uh, one of the things that I liked when I first started out with Machine was that it was a different uh, workflow for me as far as Studio One was concerned, because in Studio One I had my template where I would have my favorite favorite kick, my favorite 808, my favorite snare, and my favorite hi-hat loaded up. And the reason why I would do that is because it just saved a lot of time going into tracks. Now, you guys that are, you know, 16, 17, even 24, 25, 26 years old, like, you motherfuckers just don't understand time. You have no appreciation for the shit. Unless you do, then don't take it personally. But a lot of people don't understand how important time is as far as, um, you know, if you think about it like this, like, say say like say like my old boy right my old boy is 55 years old and he lives in he lives in houston i live in florida so you know if he lives to be say say 75 the average lifespan of a human and we are or an american man and we only get to see each other on christmas three days out of a year so that's so that's 20 times three right if i see him only on christmas 20 times three is um why can't I remember? It's 20 times 3 is 60, bro. So 20 times 3, that's 60 days. That's two months for the rest of my old boy's life that I have to spend with him over, over the duration of our time together. Okay. So that's how you got to think about life and that's how you got to think about everything so if it's say if you got a goal where you want to be um at such and such plateau by say the time you're 30 a lot of musicians put put theirself a cut off on the time with their 30 take the age that you are right now take the hours that you spend a week in the studio now multiply that by however long it's going to take you to get 30 now start thinking about how much fucking time you could save if you weren't looking for sounds every beat i figured out that it usually takes me um to, you know once you go scrolling through the samples and trying to find everything it could take 15 to 20 minutes so every three beats you're wasting an hour could you imagine that just if it, a time is something that you can't get back you know what i mean you you can't pay for it you can't steal it so you got to find a way to maximize it at all at all times so um, you know, if you're going to be like one of these idiots in the comments, that's all like, I don't care. I'll spend the extra, you know, five minutes searching for an original sample because, you know, originality is going to sell my beat. Then, dude, you know, this video is not for you. So anyhow, what I've done with machine is because you guys have all seen what I did with, um, with um with studio one we we got that we, we we understand that so as far as machine is concerned what i've went ahead and did was i've created um groups that contain all of my um all of my sounds right and i've got and i've got it i went ahead and colored them in you know with my you know with my typical studio one colors i got i got my drums in red um i got um a group that's called vox sauce which is you know all my different um vocal grunts and stuff that i put in then i have a, a group for sung vocals and then i have my vsts which i always start with um with uh once my computer stops having a heart attack and catches up it'll show you that i always start with an omnisphere now the way that the way that i kind of broke all this down is i went ahead and yeah there you go so i went ahead and what i did was for for my 808s and kicks, the reason why they're in the same group is because the way that I work a lot of the times is I'll create a kick pattern, then I'll copy that kick pattern and fly it up to an 808. So I didn't want to have to go between two groups. For me, it's faster. I only have, you know, um, really eight 808s that I'm going to go through and eight kicks. I mean, how many... You know, how many short release kicks do you need? Especially if you're like me and pretty much all your music is 808 based. So... You know, I have I have my crunchy kick. 
you know, I got I got my more muffled stuff. And these are just all the kicks that I found myself going to use because I liked the whole, um, you know, selecting a pad, then going through and browsing and turning the knobs. And that was that was really cool for, you know, the first the first three or four weeks. But then I found myself at my at my machine spending a lot of times bent down like this. And it, it actually um, like it kicked the shit out of my back. I wound up, uh, you know, I wound up waking up the other day with like severe back pain and start watching all these videos about posture and, and seeing like what I was actually doing was going like this and it wasn't so in an effort to just to, to just all around be a little bit more healthy with everything because that's stuff you got to consider if you're sitting at your desk for hours and hours at a time crunched over that it's not good for you so boom I've got I've got my 808s that I like Now the thing is, this oh that's a, that's a heart attack. Uh, the thing is, um, what you want to do is when when you go ahead and you set up your 808s, you want to just make sure that you set um, the polyphony. All, um, I make I put it to legato most of the time because um, so you can get those glides going. And then once you've got your samples loaded in and set up, you 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 just click over here and you right click um, and you select save as. And where you want to save this is you want to go to documents, native instruments, machine two, and groups. Um, you could put it in any folder that you want, but when you go to actually load from from the machine, like to load a group from the actual hardware, this is the folder that it's automatically going to go to. So you so you want to um, just go ahead and put it in your C drive. And I'm going to go ahead and resave this as 808s and kicks. Yeah, go ahead and replace it. And now, say I went to say I went to um, if I got if I got rid of this group, and then I wanted to go ahead and you know add a new group, and then go ahead and browse, find a new group, and then bring my 808s and kicks back in. Where you at, ho? Boom. Now you see I got it. I got it back. The polyphony is all on legato, and all, I'm I'm ready to go as far as as far as making tracks now. For my B group, I got I got all my different snares, and again the the mentality for me behind this was what are all the different snares I'm going to use for whatever different type of genre. You know I have pretty much like three or four go to snares that I'm always using, and then and then there was other like things that I would use like this filtered snare I would find that that was I would wind up going to that um, rather than filter a whole drum section like using a filtered snare is the easy shortcut so I have a filtered snare row and the point is is to make is to have your group be um, you know stuff that you use but different enough so that you're not gonna go have to search for, um, you know, these these different unique sounds. Um, the same thing is the same thing goes with uh, my hi hat group. You know, these are the first two hi hats I always go to. Like I found myself always using those two hi hats, and then um, you know this was something I always used too. And then as far as the other ones, I was just like, you know, what what were other things that I might want to use, you know. So like if I did something with, um, you know, maybe like a sample or more live instrumentation, I knew I wanted a more realistic sounding hi-hat. So I got these, got some tambourines. So those are always good to layer on top of snares. Every different type of open, well, not every different type, but the, the different genres of open hats. You have your, um, your 808 bass, noise oscillator, open and close multi-sample guy. So every different type of uh, hat that I would use, claps, again, you know, just you know, and these are all A1 samples, you know, from Ill Mind and Sound Oracle. Um, I made sure I went through and picked like the highest quality of samples. Didn't use like the garbage um, free kits. That's the same, you know 
um, phantom drums recycled and recut over and over and over again for like the past 20 years then um, this is something this is something that is really um, all about my production style is is these 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 vocal sections what I like to do when I cre you know when I create like synth based trap and, and stuff like that is I'm always just adding that vocal sample and that and that's just my pedigree from you know uh, coming up on 90s hip hop and always having that that grimy pitch sample or something like that like I always hear it um, you know and also just you know from early 2000s hip hop too with you know the ATL chant so you know I got I just have like all these different grunts that I've that I've used all of these I've used in real tracks and I keep coming back to them so and you'll notice again the theme here is everything is different so that I don't have to go outside the group when I want to produce I've got some sweepers and a, you know, and a flat line. Um, the next group I have is a sung vocals. Um, again, this is something that I like to put in. Yeah, um, you know, my personal sound is is a lot darker than uh, than the stuff I do on YouTube. It's a lot more aggressive, a lot harder. Um, and sometimes when I'm making things that are more um, instrument based, like I'll hear like a like a blue sample. You know, and then you could pitch that up. So you have the opportunity to do that. So I got those. Then I got more, uh, more modern day type of stuff from Splice. And the cool thing about having these on deck is, you know, you could, especially with machine, you could go in, um, edit it, find your chop. Say, I, you know, say I just like this piece of it. I could just go in. You know, and say I wanted to chop it up, I could go ahead and duplicate that and then, you know, pick something else from this pattern. So I, I have... In, in this just so many different options then you know onto the vst section you know you go into there and i've got an omnisphere on deck most of the, most of the tracks that i'm making nowadays is just 100 percent in omnisphere especially since they dropped that keyscape creative um library dude like jesus christ like i, I I've, I've always thought of like omnisphere is like yo like they don't re like you really gotta dig and um you know search to find something that's like that's like modern urban music but i swear to god this new keyscape creative it's just like it's like the it, it, it's it, it's like the 21 savage metro booming fucking sound pack dude if you just go to if you have omnisphere and keyscape you all you got to do is update it and you'll get this and then um just just stay in the keyscape creative don't even worry about the other patches because they have they added so much in here you know and what they did is they took um they took the the waves and the samples from Keyscape and turned them into all different things. So you, you know you get you got all these different types of bells um, that are just um, that are just so new and unique. They take a long time to load too. fix that but yeah I got this guy here yeah I, I love these sounds because they're so they're so different from what from what everybody has right now but 
they're just they're just like right in the pocket of of that um of just that dark freaky trap that's that's been coming out and um it's nice to have them so you can kind of stay ahead of the curve because the pirates don't got these yet this is this is the update so that is dope as fuck um but yeah guys so the once i had this uh went ahead and set up um all you got to do now is go to file preferences and when um you go to default and it'll tell you and right here where it says standalone template when you open the when you open the plugin in standalone this is going to be the the pro um the program that opens up or the project that opens up so before i had this one called blank slate and i'm going to go into groups because this is where i saved this one i'll we'll call it template full drums and then that'll be it so now when I go ahead and um, close this out, and I open a new a new instance of machine, I love I love how when it's closed, it goes back to the to the old colors too, bro. Machine Jam is something else, boy. Like that's what that's what the first first machine colorway was. I thought that was pretty cool how they gave it how they gave it a shout out like that. So if you go ahead and open up, yeah, J Bridge, I know, I know. You go ahead and open up your your session now it's you know it's a completely new project and i got my 808s i got my snares i got my hi-hats all my claps my sauce my sung vocals and i got omnisphere ready to go on deck ready to produce and this is going to save me easily 20 25 minutes a beat um you know just taking out that indecisiveness and having to dive into you know the browse menu to dig out the samples that you want even though my samples are extremely well organized this really streamlines it and if i want to change a snare i could do it real quick just by moving stuff up and down so you know if if uh, if you guys are into saving time and not wasting your time bent over pressing the browse button this is definitely something that you want to gonna give a try this is concrete zebra with craft master productions don't worry studio one tutorials are coming i'm just having so many so much fun with my with machine um keep it simple don't be basic and we'll see you on the next one